what exactly do shields do? Don't they break? I thought they slowed down your movement speed. Are they even worth it? My name is Stripe Sweater, and in this video, we will be taking a look at the pros and cons of shields and even busting some myths about them. Veterans of the medieval slasher genre from Chivalry 1 and Mordhau are familiar with having to time their parries to block their opponent's attack. Shields in those games were the only way to hold your block indefinitely. However, Chivalry 2 has changed this formula and has allowed all weapons the ability to hold block. So where exactly does that leave shields in Chivalry 2? While the in-game tutorial does a good job in explaining a lot of other mechanics, it leaves us to fend for ourselves when it comes to understanding shields. Let's start with the first and most obvious use case for shields, archers. Every projectile in the game except for arrows and bolts can be blocked normally when thrown at you. This makes shields the only reliable way to deal with the onslaught of flying needles. When your brothers in arms start coming out of warning blade looking like their grandmother's tooth cushion, you'll be safe and sound behind your wall of steel. Oh, the bravery of being out of range. Being able to reliably defend yourself against archers is a nice benefit to having shields, but their real use is all about stamina management. Shields significantly reduce stamina loss on block compared to blocking with anything else. Every time you block or oppose an opponent's attack, you lose stamina. The amount of stamina you lose is determined by the weapon you're fighting. The calculation is set at 30% of the incoming attack's base damage. Chop weapons have an additional 10% stamina drain bonus, and blunt weapons have an additional 25% bonus. For example, blocking a heavy overhead attack from a Highland Sword, which has 100 base damage, will deal 30 stamina loss on block. Shields have an additional negation factor that is added into the calculation. The exact value is unknown at this time, but my estimate after much testing is that it negates around 75% of incoming stamina loss. I would knight thee if you were not a traitor. The most stamina draining move in the game is a special attack from a mall, so let's do a quick stamina damage calculation. The mall special has 120 base damage. 30% of 120 is 36. Add 25% to 36, because Maul is a blunt weapon, and you get 45 total stamina loss from that Maul special attack. Blocking that special attack without a shield drains both Knight's and Footman's stamina meters by more than half. Remember, Knight and Footman only have 80 stamina. But, when you block the Maul special with a shield, the stamina loss is significantly less. It's about as equivalent to the stamina cost for dodging. Using a shield leaves you with a ton of extra stamina to work with in a fight. So, what's the downside of using a shield then? Well, shields can break. After taking enough damage, a shield will shatter and you will be open for a free hit from your opponent, similar to when you run out of stamina. After some testing with a combination of 50 damage attacks and 10 damage jabs, we determined that the small shield has 200 HP, The medium shield has 300 HP. And the large shield has 400 HP. Shield health isn't displayed anywhere, but your shield will appear more and more damaged depending on how many hits you've blocked. 
Paying attention to shield health is crucial to having the upper hand on your enemy. A smart shield player will use their shield to help gain a stamina advantage during the fight, and either unequip it or throw it away when it gets low on health to avoid the penalty of the shield break. There are many unknown factors and questions when it comes to shield mechanics, and misinformation can spread quickly. Me and the boys headed to the lab and tried to solve some of these unknowns. Question number one. Do shields slow you down? No. Shields do not affect your movement speed. After much testing, with many different scenarios and many foot races up and down tournament grounds, we determined that shields, whether equipped in hand or on your back, have no impact on the speed of your character. I admit, this one shocked me too. I was misinformed and I apologize to any others I have misinformed on my stream. Myth busted. Question number two, do shields have a larger parry hitbox? From what we can tell, shields do not affect parry hitbox size. We tested the bottom hitbox with weapon blocks and all shield types. All parry boxes seem to be identical regardless of what you were blocking with. We tested the top of the hitbox with jump stabs and didn't notice any increased difficulty in landing them. The side hitbox was the only one we were questioning, but after further testing we did not notice an increase in hitbox size with shield. Further testing may be required. Question number three. Does a weapon's bonus damage apply to shields? No. Blunt and chop weapons do not do any additional damage to shields. Since we know how much health a shield has, we tested this theory with the mace against a large shield. If bonus damage applied, Mace overhead swing would be doing 60 damage to shield against a knight. This means the shield should break after 6 overhead swings at 60 damage each and 4 jabs at 10 damage each for an even 400 damage. In reality, after landing our swings and four jabs, the shield was still usable. We needed to use an additional two overheads and four jabs to break the shield. This math works out to 40 damage per overhead, which is the base damage value of mace overhead. Myth busted. Some things to note about shield. Shields will passively block arrows. You can use these to your advantage when approaching an archer by keeping them to your left side. You can also use a tackle animation which charges toward them with the shield up to stay safe from incoming arrows. Equipping the shield on your back also protects you from getting shot, so use this when trying to run away from archers. Note, other throwables ignore this rule and make them hit you. Shields work very well as a throwing weapon. Throwing the shield means you can maintain pressure on your opponent if they attempt to run away to recover health or stamina. There is no risk of losing your main weapon, which means you can quickly follow up with a melee strike after landing a hit with a shield throw. Shields have different jab damages. A large shield does 10 jab damage. A medium shield does 15 jab damage. A small shield does 20 jab damage. Shields do not lose health when blocking with a counter. This is because a counter blocks by using your weapon, not the shield. A riposte must first block and then strike back, which is why it drains shield health. Using counters throughout your fight can increase the longevity of your shield and allows you to save its stamina benefits for later. Alright everyone, that covers almost everything to do with shields in Chivalry 2. In my personal opinion, shields are an excellent way to gain the upper hand in a fight for the insane amount of stamina that they can save you and should definitely not be overlooked. If you find yourself frequently running out of stamina before your opponent, try using a shield. You may find it does the trick. Just remember to keep a close eye on that shield health so it doesn't backfire on you. Thanks for watching friends, I'll see you in the next video.